Hey guys, this is Abba with Coffee and Code. Today we'll be looking at inheritance. Inheritance is where you have a superclass and then you can derive children based on that superclass. So for example, we could have our animal class and we can derive dog, cat classes based on the animal class and they will all contain the same properties. What I mean by that is we could declare a class using this notation public class animal we can give it a private string with a public property and a constructor and one function that just prints the name. So as of right now, we can just create an animal, give it a constructor with the parameter and then we can call print name. And all this will do is print the name of the animal to the console. So now we're going to create a new class and inherit from our animal class. So just as normal public class and we can create a dog one. So in here we can type colon animal and this notation tells us that whatever is to the right of the colon we want to inherit from this class into our dog class. Now this problem is telling you that we need to also specify a constructor. So in here we could type public dog, open the brackets and open the curly braces. And as we can see in the animal constructor we need to give it a string and that string represents a name so we can type string name. Now it still gives us the error and the reason why is because we have a constructor inside here. So therefore from our dog constructor we need to call the base constructor and we can do that very easily through this notation. So after you've wrote the name of the class followed by the parameters you need just before the curly braces you can insert a colon and you can type the word base and then you pass the parameters that you need and it tells you there in a pop-up that we'll be calling the animal constructor and it only requires a string name and because we already have that string name available here we could just type name so what happens now is if we make a dog class this constructor will fire and dog will get passed into string name and before any lines of code get executed within these curly braces it passes it to the base and it inserts whatever gets passed into here into here which then inadvertently calls the constructor for animal. And you can see that if you double click base, Visual Studio will automatically highlight the base constructor for you so you can see where your code is going. And from there, as soon as the animal constructor is run, then our name has been stored. If you don't like this notation and you prefer to keep the constructor assignments completely in the new class you've created, then you can remove the construct out of here and remove the brace and you can use them as normal. So now our class is as follows. We have a string variable and we also have a function. And because we've inherited from the animal class, we get all of these properties. So what we can do in here in order to store the name is just type name equals name. The lowercase name is from our parameter and the uppercase name comes from our property setup, which is great. And then what we could do in here, the same thing is we can just print the name and we'll see the exact same output dog now the reason why you would do inheritance is because if you have multiple classes that you need to inherit from a superclass it probably means that you have multiple shared properties we could make a public class cut and inherit from the animal and create our own constructor too On first glance, these two classes look exactly the same. And the similarities is they both have a name available and we can both print their name. That's because it's stored in the animal class. Now let's say for example, we wanna have another function to let them sleep. And we can just print to the console lots of Z's to indicate that they're sleeping. Now both the dog and the cat can sleep we can put it in our super class because then we'll both inherit from the super class called animal and they'll both have this function available. So now we can type dog.sleep and if we make our cat too, we can print the name and we can also sleep. And we run that code and we can see it like this. Now that's also great except now that they still look the same. So the reason why inheritance is really good, if you need a function to be available in one of the classes, 
but not both, then you can put it inside here. So we could have a public void make noise. And we can just type woof. And the reason why I've included it inside the derived classes is because the noise from a cat and the noise from a dog is completely different. So what we can do here is now we can type dog stop make noise and although the same function is indeed available, the implementations of them is in fact different. So as you can see here, when we call make noise, we have woof and we say make news on the cat, we have meow. And the reason for this is because their outputs are going to be considerably different, then what we can do is instead of storing in the base class, we can include them in the derived classes and we can keep doing this for every single property. So the best thing to do is to make sure that all the properties that are inside the super class is used for all of the derived classes. So we know that each animal is going to have a name, so we can also add something like legs. We know that they're all going to have legs, so we can call a public int legs. And we can just assign the getters and setters. And then in our constructors, we can include int legs. And we can include the same thing for our cat constructor. So now we can insert four into here and four into here. So now we've told us that both the cat and the dog, we can assert how many legs that they have. And these two properties are not constrained within the cat or constrained within the dog because they belong to the animal. And you could keep adding as many properties as you want. And if you realize that there's more items in here that you want to add, then you can just keep adding as many functions as you want inside here. And both the cat and the dog will make use of these functions. So then you can actually use them inside of here. So that was just a quick introductory to inheritance. Inheritance helps us keep a good structure so we don't have to keep repeating our code. There's no point in including a sleep function inside the dog animal class and the cat animal class if they're both gonna have the same values. So it's always best to keep it once and use it multiple times. Just a quick recap. So we have a public class animal. We have some properties assigned into the class and we have some functions assigned and our dog will inherit from the animal, which means now we have them properties available for our dog. And we also have all of these functions available for the dog as well. But for the dog too, we also have a new function called make noise that just prints a line to the console and the same thing for the animal. They both have a constructor and they both have a new function. And we can use all of the functions that are in the base class inside the inheritors class to be able to keep our code structured and improve maintainability. In the next video, we'll be looking at abstract classes. Abstract classes will let us define what kind of functions we need in a base class so we make sure that when we come to do our implementation, it will always be correct. Hope this made sense. If you have any questions, please put them down below and I will get back to you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.